Uh, now. So this was Valo. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. So it's up to you. Okay, you don't want to. Okay. So um, I will need the. So I will pretend I'm Valo. So I have to. <laughs> so you need the education. So yeah. Also. <laughs> So, uh, remember that uh, market might be complicated, uh, but it's good because actually we can simplify uh, how to read charts. Because markets are making shapes. So actually, you are not crazy, but you can see rectangle, you can see triangle, you can see channel, you can see shapes in the market that simplify, uh, or how to say, so yes, I think simplifying is a good the understanding word. of the overall. Yeah, to, to make it more readable by a five years old uh, kid. So, this is a rectangle. Of course, it's not a real rectangle, but it has a shape of rectangle. So, rectangle, it's when a market is flat. We can call it a range. So, when you have a range, you can imagine mm, kind of rectangle. It's important because you need to spot rectangle on a chart. You have triangle. Also, it's very important to spot triangle. The difference between a rectangle and a triangle, uh, it's tri triangle gives you an information which is more important. Which one? Yeah. Yeah, there is, you see here, a lot of movement, less movement, so it's like, uh, what's the name in English of the skin? I think. Sque squeezing? Yeah, maybe. So, so yeah, a rectangle, Okay, there is nothing else to say. Oh, here, there is something happening. So there is less and less and less volatility. Volatility is the distance between a top and a bottom. After you have this kind of thing that are very, very frustrating because you never know what is happening. Because remember, you don't know in real time. Uh, of course, you, 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 you discover it uh, as the, the shapes is, is doing. But here, you never know. You know, when you are here, you don't know what is happening after, so you're like, ah, ah, it goes up, ah, but no, no, it goes down. And they say, okay, so it goes down, ah, but no, ah, it goes up. So, so this uh, shape, as soon as you spot it, uh, it's very complicated. So me, what I used to do, I just say, okay, I, I, I will just wait uh, to see what is happening after, and I will not risk anything uh, here because you never know what can happen. So opening triangle, but it has other name, of course. Uh, you know, again, uh, the trading is full of people who likes to give names to look like smart. So you can find someone, people saying that this is a flag or, or an uh, uptrend triangle. I mean, whatever. We don't care. Just a triangle, a rectangle, and an opening triangle. Then sometimes you have channel. So the difference between uh, this and this, it's actually a rectangle, but it's going uh, up. And here you have one going down. Of course, you have a lot of different possibilities. You can have triangle going down, triangle going up. I mean, there is several uh, possibilities. So this is a chart. So now, if you have uh, remembered everything we have said, you know that here you have the time, here you have the price, and you know that those are candlestick. So you know that if it's a four-hour uh, chart, uh, this is the opening. Four hours after, it's the closing, and the highest points during those four hours is here, and the lowest point is here. Then, if you remember the uh, candlestick pattern, you will see here an angle frink. You will see here uh, a, a star of the, of the evening, a shooting star. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Uh, you can see angle frink, angle frink. Oh, but a lot of angle frink are the same level. It's weird. So this is one of the things I told you before. If you want to spot all the angle frink, try to see the connection. All of them are working. Why? I would just try to guess. I mean, make your, your, your table. Angle frink number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. Here you have morning star. Okay, most of them works. Why? And you know, try to, to see the common points. But anyway, this could be a bit uh, weird. So try to simplify it by seeing a rectangle and a channel. So the bad news is that there is uh, not only one way to see rectangle. Actually, everybody can draw a rectangle the way he wants. This is why teaching trading sometimes is complicated, because I might draw it like that. Someone else will draw it from this point. Someone else here. And actually, none of us is wrong. We are all right. So this is also something very complicated with trading, is that nobody is wrong, nobody is right. 
There is several right answer and several wrong answer as well. But sometimes the, the people who will draw a square here, they will be right. Sometimes they will be wrong, so there is a balance. So there is no technique to draw. Everybody has a different technique. He has one, I have one, Valo who left has one, and probably you're gonna have also one. But it's important now, you to spot uh, uh, shapes in the market. So here you can have also a triangle. Uh, here actually you also can see a triangle. So it's very important to do that. Recognize shapes in the market. Do you want to say something about shapes? Or? Uh, just that uh, mo most of the engulfings that happened here and as well as, okay, the morning star is not perfect, but the engulfings at least worked out at least for a while because they were happening at a, obviously a strong level here. And uh, we are going to discuss support and resistance, I think a few slides after that. So this is what uh, a resistance is called. If you notice, uh, when you are on the top of your rectangle, uh, the patterns works better than when you are here. As an example, take a look. Here we could say it's a, it's a shooting star. Here also, here also, here, uh, well, here we, we could say it's an angle ring. I mean, it's not, but let's ha assume it's one. Uh, and here also. It's funny to see that none of them works. Only this one actually works. In the opposite, here, most of them works. But if we look at it in the other way, all the morning star works here. Here, you have an angle ring which is eating the candle before. And it works after the movement goes up. Here you have again an angle ring that works. Here you have a morning star that works. And here you have a morning star that doesn't work. So let's try to, to, to find common points. Uh, why you think that this one doesn't work while this one and this one and this one works? What's the common point or what's the difference between all of them? Uh, perhaps there were some exhaustion and uh, the one that they work over there and it reached a spot which would be hard to break through. It could be. Over Fury? C can you spot a, a common point between this one and this one? And, and, and why this one doesn't work? Yes, yeah, so there's a range of volatility. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's joining what, what you said, yeah. So there is this, uh, so we, we reach some point, but also just by logic. Here we, ha we are at the beginning of a new movement. You know, we go from one square to another one. So it's fresh. Here we are less fresh, less fresh and less fresh. Actually, the more you wait in a, a channel, to spot uh, morning uh, star, and the less the probability the movement to go uh, is important. It's just pure logic. And at the same time, the uh, earlier you try to spot uh, more, uh, sh a shouting star on an uptrend uh, rectangle, and the less the probability to work is important. This is why uh, it's always the late one that works and the early one that doesn't work. So those are the kind of things that you have to proceed because it's just logic. I mean, there is no theory behind, there is no knowledge behind, it's just pure logic. Okay? So first, uh, if I understand the question, uh, uh, an AI can be better than a human. So you, you, you can't, for example, if tomorrow, you actually it's, it's happening, Tesla or uh, cars that uh, have an AI with road drive. How the Tesla is driving? It's boring. Now put a human in a Tesla. Oh, it's funny. So, so you can't compare an AI because AI are very good at analyzing uh, markets. Uh, actually, a lot of AI are trading, but 
you trade in another way when you are human than when you are AI. So when you are human, maybe you, you feel more, you use more your instincts, and uh, AI, of course, uh, there is a lot of uh, different AI. There is the neuronal network, which tries to analyze a lot of data in the past to be able to understand what is happening. Uh, but it's important to know that most of the AI in trading, they, don't, they are not used to trade big movement. They are used to trade very tiny, tiny uh, inefficiency in the market. And, uh, and long-term movement, it's still uh, humans or half human, half uh, AI or this kind of thing. So, this, right. this is something else, but yeah, it, 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 it could be this also. But um, high frequency trading doesn't mean uh, it's a robot who, who will buy and it's go up or who will sell and it's go down. It's way more complicated. Uh, but for that, I, I need to explain you what is a spread, uh, how liquidity uh, works. But uh, high-frequency trading, it's not robot that uh, predict movement. Most of the time, it's robot that uh, use inefficiency of liquidity uh, and this kind of thing. So this is super high technical. Fair, but if after you want to speak more, you can come to me and we can discuss about it. Other questions? Uh, I'd like to add something. Uh, you told me a bit ago that, that to imagine that um, so if you're at a stop stop light, but you have no timer, and uh, the sooner you pass, the bigger the chance you have to actually uh, catch the stop light at green. And if you wait, if you wait a lot, and uh, if you, the the light might turn red, so you might not have a chance to pass. So you can imply that there. Yeah, I, I, I don't. Yeah, b b basically the image he wants to discuss is uh, uh, wh when you turn on the street and very far you see the green light, you have no clue since when it's green. So you have two choices. Either you accelerate because you don't know, so you say, fuck, I, I really have to do it because maybe it's 10 minutes green or maybe just past green, or you just wait. So you, you have a piece of information that is missing. When you trade, you know the information because when you are here, you know that you have all this movement that happened before, so you know that the green light is here for at least 10 minutes, so a red light is coming very soon. This is why, but there is a change in the, in the, in the colors, no? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Okay, squares. Yeah, here, uh, uh, if you can spot, although two of them are, <laughs> were already shown, but the idea here was to give you a chance to try and spot uh, different shapes on this chart. Uh, for example, one minute or so, and then we can show you a few that we marked. And if you have any questions or ideas, you can share with us and we can share with you. It's, everybody is different and we'll see. Uh, this is why trading is funny. Actually, if there is a market, it's because people are not agree. If everybody sees the same thing, there is no buyer and seller. If people see different things, then there is people selling, people buying, and you have market. Uh, you have also this. Okay, it, it was a part of Varo, this so channel, and is there something else? Oh, there I is another one. I'm not sure this. Uh, this, this I think this is corn, but I'm not sure. So yeah, just try to picture shapes to simplify uh, how you can read the uh, charts. Do you want to speak about Mr. Do? Uh, yeah, I won't go into a lot of details, but basically Charles Do uh, invented uh, the so-called Do theory. Uh, it was for the stock market, but it applies to all markets basically. Uh, what he said in his theory is that he can define a market uh, that has sort of like three phases. So the first one is the uh, primary phase or primary trend, which can uh, last for one year or two years or even ten years. Then he has uh, secondary trends, which are a lot uh, less lasting. And usually they are uh, sort of a corrections to the main uh, main waves. So they are, they are corrections to the uh, main trend the, or the primary trend. 
And last but not least, uh, there are minor trends, uh, which are lasting uh, less than three weeks. And usually we consider them as uh, noise on the market. Uh, to be honest, for me, a minor trends or uh, noise is uh, small ranges inside, so small uh, square or uh, rectangle formations, since we talked about formations just now, uh, inside of a huge, uh, for example, uptrend or a downtrend, it doesn't matter. Uh, so this is about though, um, and actually it's the only theory that, that can actually be proven. Uh, most of the theories uh, cannot be proven or are very hard to apply on the market. I am quite sure you probably heard of other theories. So for example, the Elliott wave theory, uh, which uh, for me at least it can work, but also it cannot work and you cannot prove that uh, the market is defined how Elliott defined it. But you can prove how Dode defined it uh, by creating uh, by spotting actually higher highs or lower lows on the market. So in this case, as you can see, we have a primary trend here. This is an uptrend. There we have a downtrend. And uh, each trend is defined by the highest points the price reaches. Uh, it, if, if the points get higher and higher, this obviously means that we're in an uptrend and if the uh, bottoms that the uh, primary trend makes, the waves of the primary trend, uh, goes lower and lower, we are in a downtrend. And you can see on those charts that we also have the secondary trend waves or the corrections to the primary trend. Do, so do, we have the primary do trend. You want, do not speak about the turtle? Hmm? So the turtle, you, you know it? The, the turtle. Uh, you can speak about the okay. turtle if you want. So this guy, uh, do you know the, the word do? There is an indice, uh, yeah, the uh, journal. So it's this guy uh, who invented it, and yeah, he came with this theory that there is different waves, and uh, a side of his theory is to say that how we know that the market is going uptrend, it's because the the top are always higher and higher and higher. And uh, there is uh, two guys. Uh, I think it was in the 50s or 60s they made a bet. And uh, one guy, he was a trader, and another guy was not a trader. And he said, you know, traders are people who are smart, educated, and uh, nobody can become a good trader if they are not as smart as I am. And the other guy he said, no, actually, it's everybody can become a trader. It's one of the easiest things. You just have to learn and so on. So they made a bet. And they bet that uh, the guy who thinks that trading is easy, he has to teach to, I don't know how many, maybe seven, seven or 10 guys he has six months to teach them how to become the best trader. They hold the bet. Who won? It's a question. The, not the trader, but uh, the less sophisticated guy because he explained it in a simpler way to the other people. Perhaps. Yeah, it's what you wanted to say. It's like everyone uh, can learn trading. Yeah, so he won. Do you, do you know? So we call them the turtle. He called his students the small turtle. So the strategy of the turtle. Have you ever heard about the strategy of the turtle? No? It's the first thing you know when you start trading. So they said, OK, this is a theory of dough. So let's make a strategy out of that. Every time the market is breaking this point, you buy. So you buy here, then you buy here, then you sell here, and you sell here. That's all. And they won. They beat the best trader in the world by doing this stupid strategy. Unfortunately, it doesn't work anymore, or not that good, because market has changed. Now there is volatility, there is bot, there is a derivatives product that are uh, making uh, everything complicated. But in the 50s and 60s, there was no computer. You know, you know how people were making charts? They were uh, uh, calling the broker to get price twice per day. It's called the fixing. So at 11.15 in Paris, they are calling their broker, hey, what is the price of the stock? Ah, oh, it's this price. Okay, I write it on my calendar, I mean, on my book. And then the evening at 5.15, uh, uh, what is the price of the close? And there's just two price per day. 
So of course, when you have two price per day, you have chart that are uh, not as sophisticated as today. So this is called the, uh, uh, the strategy of the turtle. So just Google it tonight, and that's all. So Do was telling that an uptrend it's a market that makes higher, I mean high higher and low lower. And the opposite, it means that a range, it's a market that doesn't make new high or doesn't make new low. And that's all. And how to prove it. Uh, so let's say that you have a point A and you have a point B. And the point B is lower than the point A. And the dark uh, line, it's uh, the shorter way, okay? But as you know, market doesn't go straight. It will be easier, but it doesn't. Market makes waves. If you think now how it's possible for uh, how a wave lo should look like to go from point A to point B, then you need a very big wave going down and small wave going up. Then big wave going down and small wave going up. So each up, uh, uptrend wave is always smaller than the downtrend. And as a result, the, the, the point between a, a down wave and an up wave, it's a bottom. So as you see, each bottom is always lower. And if you remember the first time uh, we met, I told you that each theory is totally bullshit and it can't be proven. So you are speaking about the theory of Elliot. This guy is funny, but its theory can't be uh, proved. Uh, actually, not, no theory. But the Doe theory is just uh, logic. I mean, it's like that. If you have a market which makes waves and is going down, then the bottom of each wave is lower than the previous one. It can't be different. And uh, if you go back to the previous chart, just for uh, uh, no, the next one. Next. Ah, next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just uh, wanted to add that. Just a sec. I just want to add that uh, not only for example, in this downtrend, we are seeing uh, lower lows, but it's very important that we will be seeing lower highs as well, because if this high, it, we can still have a lower low here and a higher high here, but then it's, it will be, as we talked, an open triangle at this point. And in this case, uh, we are not actually having a trending market, so to say, but we are having a market that is in sort of a decision point. Uh, traders and uh, investors still uh, can decide where the market will go next and uh, what trend will start after that. Can I make just something? Yeah. A, a small game. Uh, what is this price? Is it, is it Forex? Is it rice? What do you think those candles represent? Just give a, a random uh, thing. What, what do you think it represents? Bitcoin price or? Okay, maybe. Agriculture, maybe. Yeah. Another idea? Huh? It could be anything like what? Okay, so it depends on the liquidity, but yeah. Okay, so we, we can see there is square, there is trend, there is, there is angle fring. The point A is an angle fring, and this angle fring works after you have a downtrend. So what is this market? You, you are saying something. What if I tell you that this is the chart of the evolution of the birth in Japan? It is. I just took the data of the birth in Japan. I put it to Excel. It's not a trading platform. I put them on Excel. I, I use the 4,000 data. I just transform it into a candlestick. What does it mean? It means that technical analysis, we can say it's bullshit because take a look. The, we, we could have predict the birth of Japanese by just analyzing candle or trend. So, this is why I like uh, technical analysis. You can apply it to any kind of uh, curves, even if it's not a market. 
and it works. You have resistance, you have support, you have trend, you have candlestick, you have everything you want. So this is why you always be careful with technical analysis that tells you, yeah, you can predict market or whatever. It's just that technical analysis sh shows you something. It shows you a downtrend, that's all. It shows you a reversal of the trends, that's all. It can't predict, but it just shows uh, some statement. So yeah, it, it was uh, uh, the, the birth evolution in, uh, in Japan. Which obviously dropped heavily. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here are a few examples for higher highs and after that lower lows. Uh, this is a line chart. A line chart. Uh, we spoke about it at the beginning. Actually, Pascal spoke about it. Uh, not a lot of traders use it, but I think, uh, especially for beginner traders, it is quite uh, easy to spot. Uh, areas like that or even support and resistance areas which is the next topic uh, to spot them on this chart because it's a lot more simplified than the candlestick chart now on the next slide is basically the same as you can see it's an uptrend uh, we are making higher lows and higher highs and on the second slide we have exactly the same period and exactly the same movement but with a candlestick chart and you can see that for example here we had an engulfing here we had an engulfing here we had an engulfing uh, here it's a little bit complex but uh, we have uh, the, um, uh, the morning star uh, and then here we have actually this can be considered as a spinning top or also as an engulfing and so on. The idea is that sometimes you can spot uh, obviously the trend and the uh, highs and lows on a line chart easily and then you can go to the uh, candlestick chart to see what you can expect because you are expecting for the, this low to not be below this high. If it goes below this high, then this is no longer an uptrend. It has to be high or below this one. So, for example, if you know that, if we are here, so without that, you can go to the uh, candlestick chart and say, okay, this engulfing might be, or this engulfing might be the end of this uh, secondary trend or correction according to though and uh, the uptrend might continue. So here is another way to uh, define sort of like entry spots or to get a second confirmation that this, this uptrend will continue. Again, this is with a downtrend example. Uh, we are having, as you can see, lower highs and lower lows or uh, bottoms. And again, you can see uh, the graph, the uh, candlestick chart, uh, where, as Pascal explained, even if you're using the turtle strategy, <laughs> you can uh, look for possibilities to sell the market if you think, of course, that the downtrend will continue. You can look at when this is broken, so this bottom, because you expect for if the price is continuing down to make lower bottoms and uh, to go to keep going lower so again after this one after this one etc on a range it's a bit more different that's why you need a different strategy for a range uh, because on the range you are having uh, bottoms that are fixed on one uh, level and tops that are also fixed on one level so for sure you will need a uh, different strategy in order to trade uh, that type of trend. And uh, again, defining uh, the highs and the lows can uh, show you uh, in what state the market is. So if it's in a range, you have to look for uh, heights that are not, uh, the, the next one is not higher than the previous one, and lows that the next one is not uh, lower than the previous one. 